Hello, it's me again after a, a lengthy break from making videos, for which I apologise. And the reason for my absence is a bit complicated, but I no longer uh, live in England, which isn't really a, a very nice place for people like me anymore, not least because I've been uh, debanked. So I've legged it abroad, where I'm watching in utter disbelief what is happening across the Western world as we are incrementally nudged into what appears to be a coming dictatorship. Now, talking about this sort of thing leads to accusations of being a conspiracy theorist or an outright lunatic. But as many people have noticed over the last three or so years, uh, most of yesterday's conspiracy theories are today's reality. And the way it works is always the same. Person A or X or Y uh, notices something is wrong and publicly writes or speaks about it on social media, whilst the mainstream media says nothing at all. Social media then unites against person A and algorithmically censors him or her. Fact checkers uh, then enter the fray and explain to us why person A is a mentally deranged uh, misinformation maniac and can thus be safely ignored. But time passes and person A is proved to be absolutely correct again and again and again, but nothing happens. The media still remains mute. The politicians remain mute. The fact checkers remain mute. And the propaganda machine just rolls on as though person A never existed at all, as though truth and reality can simply be ignored in their entirety. I have never seen anything like it in my life. Up until March 2020, my life, and I'm 59 by the way, had been fairly routine, as it had for all of us. But then out of the blue in 2020 came COVID-19 and an unprecedented power grab by individual leaders of individual countries, all acting in total global lockstep, uh, which curiously enough replicated exactly the recommended actions outlined in a global pandemic plan uh, in a conference in October 2019 called Event 201, sponsored by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the World Economic Forum. Now, by the end of 2020, uh, during which much of the world was shut down, came the miracle vaccines that we were energetically encouraged to sample. Were they safe? Were they effective? Did we actually need them? Well, we were told yes to all three. And if you disagreed, there were recriminations. And if you publicly protested, there were physical recriminations. And in Britain, police dressed in black body armour hit you over the head. In Australia, the police actually shot at you, uh, albeit with bruising projectiles rather than dum-dum bullets. And in Canada, the dictator wannabe Trudeau invoked the War Act and detailed brown-shirted men armed with assault rifles and billy clubs to deal with the truculent truckers who wished only to maintain their bodily autonomy, otherwise known as my body, my choice, which is something Trudeau claims to passionately support unless it suits him otherwise. And then it was all over. The greatest act of global medical oppression and global political repression in the history of mankind just faded away with no consequences whatsoever for those involved in what could easily be described as genuine crimes against humanity. It just faded away and life appeared sort of ready to return to normal, but life hasn't returned to normal at all. We're told the next pandemic will probably be here quite soon, and according to the smirking Bill Gates, it will be worse than the last one. We're told men can be women and women can be men. Drag queens suddenly materialised out of nowhere and ended up dangling children on their knees in kindergartens and public libraries, all much to, to, the, uh, to the delight of pied-à-terre dwelling minor attracted individuals everywhere. And then there's global warming or global boiling as the uh, communist sympathising head of the United Nations terms it. Weather forecasters started painting flame red colours over normal summer temperatures 
and wildfly, uh, wildfires in areas that always had wildfires are blamed not on arsonists but on increased temperature as though undergrowth miraculously and spontaneously combusts at sun tanning temperatures. And while all of this insanity is going on, we discover our politicians are gearing up the banks to become cashless, whilst they're also working on schemes to introduce central bank digital currencies or CBDCs, which will be controllable by the governments themselves. Digital ID, digital health passports are both being pushed by our ruling elites and that peculiar little Ethiopian bloke with a dubious past and unpronounceable name who quite unaccountably was made uh, the head honcho of the World Health Organization. So, or perhaps his friend smirking Bill Gates played a part in this otherwise inexplicable promotion, who knows. The World Economic Forum talks about carbon credits and carbon trackers. The Western politicians, the UN, the EU, and the literally hundreds of bank CEOs uh, who religiously attend Davos say, yes, let's do it. That's a brilliant idea. Now, it doesn't take a great leap of logic to realize that uh, should CBDCs become a reality, the governments which signed up to net zero climate policies, uh, as in all of them, will actually be able to stop us from buying uh, that plane ticket or that extra tank of fuel or extra kilo of minced cow uh, once our carbon limit has been reached, thus confining us to our 15-minute cities and oolis zones uh, where we will happily consume the bugs whilst watching Barbie does Bolivia uh, in between doing Ken. And what are we being nudged into? Stop flying, they tell us. Stop driving. Stop heating your home. Stop eating meat. Take your vaccine. Listen to the science. We are the science. Stop destroying the planet. Sell your farm. Kill your livestock if you refuse to let Bill Gates inject your cows with his magical mRNA potion. Listen to us. Do as we say. It's good for the world. Don't question us. The vaccine is safe. The virus is lethal. You need the vaccine. We are your sole source of truth. The world is burning. Men can give birth. Reject the evidence of your eyes and your ears. That is our final and most essential command. Trust Big Brother. Trust the state. Trust us. And if you don't and if you speak out, we will come for you. The 100,000 plus men of military appearance and military fighting age who halfway crossed the channel before uh, being picked up by our ironically named border force ships are refugees and we must care for them, they tell us. No, no, you're not allowed to enter the hotel and the grounds or the military barracks where we keep them and no, you're not allowed to know why we group them together away from spying eyes. Just trust us. We are your sole source of truth, you racist. Shut up and take your booster. Now, nothing I've said so far in this video is a conspiracy. The United Nations, the World Economic Forum, and what appears to be their placed politicians across the West are acting in lockstep with their Agenda 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, their, just, uh, their justice... Uh, equality, diversity and inclusion goals, their net zero climate goals and their economic and social governance goals, all of which share one rather obvious and incredibly chilling trait. Not a single one of those goals can ever be achieved in a fully functioning democracy. So where is it all going? I think that's quite an easy question to answer. Uh, we're heading toward a total dictatorship. And no matter which country you live in in the West, your government is doing everything I've mentioned and they're now passing uh, legislation to limit what dissidents can say on social media. They're passing misinformation and disinformation legislation. They will own the truth just as they claim to own the science. And they're quietly passing unprecedented levels of power to the World Health Organization, which it will then use to globally control the next global pandemic. 
Now, global crises are the order of the day, and the only way they can be dealt with, or so we are told, is by global measures. Now, sometimes that's perfectly true. But when the global crises may not be actual crises at all, and the global measures are so repressive as to be genuinely totalitarian, then they should and they must be subject to intensive questioning. And if the politicians, the media and social media completely block you from questioning them, and if journalists and scientists and doctors can actually lose their jobs by questioning them, then we are already living in a partial dictatorship. I'm not sure when we will live under a total dictatorship, but I do know it's being built and I do know it's in its final phase. It might happen next year. Uh, US elections and uh, all that which Trump must not be allowed to win or it might happen in five years time but happen it will and probably sooner than later certainly before 2030 nothing else makes sense uh, some people have suggested the sole reason for ferrying ashore young men of military bearing is that they will do what our police and army would refuse to do if we try to resist what's coming now, I wouldn't completely discount such a claim at all. You know, today's conspiracy theory is tomorrow's reality. So question everything you hear from your politicians and see in the mainstream media. And never, never, never reject the evidence of your eyes and your ears.